Good morning everyone and welcome back to another episode of Rift Amps. So this is a slightly different video today. Um, I've been asked uh, by a couple of people now to explain is there a good way to use Gavit, which is this uh, cloth covered wire that we use in our amplifier builds. Um, some people have used it before and they really struggle with it. As you can see it's this cloth covered single core wire that we also call pushback wire that you can push back to and to reveal the the wire underneath which then makes things easier for soldering now when you've mastered gavit you can create some really clean and neat uh, lead dresses in your amplifier builds but it is quite tricky to master and so i wanted to show show you how i use it and give you some tips and tricks now as you can see here Gavit has benefits in that not only is it single core, but the cloth is actually slightly wax impregnated, so it re retains its shape. So you can twist it and manoeuvre it into all sorts of different shapes. And it's learning how to do that that will really increase the quality of your build. So what I've put together here is a simple... Um, it's an old chassis that I've just mounted a, a test board on and a single nine pin socket now this is v1 of a princeton reverb style build so i'm going to show you how i wire that uh, with gavit so the first thing that i do is once i've cut some from the re reel is i will i will lay a strength straighten it out get it really straight as i can i'll push back the end i will um solder on sorry i will tin tin the end of my iron and i will melt the solder in the eye that's already there and i'll place the piece of gavit wire in vertical like so and what when i'm i'm feeling there to make sure it's got a good bond and that's going to hold itself straight now this particular wire is the cathode connection that's going to go to pin three on the socket and once i'm ready for that now one thing i do on these on V1 of a Princeton Reverb style build is I twist the signal wire, which goes to pin two, and the cathode wire, pin three, together. This helps with a little bit of hum and noise reduction, but also helps keeps things neat and tidy. So the red wire is our signal wire, and our yellow wire in this case is for the cathode. So you can see I'm just maneuvering that into place. Uh, start with pin two and we get that soldered onto the sorry hooked around the, uh, the the valve socket pin and then we can solder that into place and we just tack solder them in remember the the wire itself has got a good mechanical connection and we're just using solder to help that along and then with my gavit I can you use my finger to help radius it into position where I want it. One tip I have for everyone is you always want to try and keep the top side of Gavit always pointing up if possible. You never want to twist it or rotate it unless you're doing um, a twist like I've done there. So we're just pushing the, uh, the cloth back there to reveal some wire. We'll get that into place and I can hook it around, squeeze it together and then I can solder that into place. So the next wire will be the plate or anode connection, which is pin one. And as you'll notice I'm working from right to left on the board. So I'm going to cut myself another length of gavit. I'm going to straighten it out as so. I can melt the solder in my eyelet and then I can insert the gavit into the eyeless itself again in a vertical position and once that's set that will stand up nice and straight so i use this technique called what i call waterfalling where i imagine that the gavit is is uh, is waterfalling over the edge of the board down into the chassis it looks something like that and then i can just using my fingers to radius it into place into the position i want so as a rule of thumb, with any lead dress that you're doing, you're always trying to avoid... Um, actually, no, that's a lie. Uh, 
if where possible you want to cross single wires at a uh, signal wires excuse me at a 90 degree angle which i'll be doing later on uh, unless it's for noise reduction where you can twist them together and that's something that you generally learn but um signal what signal and anode wires we try and cross at 90 degrees signal and cathode wires unless it's a cathode follower we often twist together not always but that's how this works so this wire here is uh, is actually a cathode wire pin 8 and I've done this one like this because I want the other wires to f go over the top of them so this one is actually easier to do in the first place so we've got that one in place that's looking nice and neat happy with that now I can do my uh, signal wire for triode number two, which is pin seven in this case. And you see, and that's going that's coming down over the two wires that I've already laid down. Now I'm actually doing this at rather a quick speed just to keep this video nice and short. But when I'm building my own amplifiers, I do actually take a lot more time with every wire to get them as good and as neat as I possibly can uh, but just for this example we're doing this at a at a faster speed otherwise this video will be half an hour long so I've got one more wire to do which is the final uh, anode or plate wire which we're just soldering onto the board there waterfall it down over the wire and you see it crosses at a 90 degree angle and then we just do a, a right a 90 degree right hand bend to get that where I want it to go. And then once that's soldered, I just slightly tweak them, reposition them exactly where I want them to go, make sure I'm happy with the way it looks. Not actually happy with the solder joint on the board itself. It looks like it didn't fully bond where I want it to go. So just reflow that. And then that is the V1 socket of a Princeton Reverb style amplifier wired up for nice noise free operation well that's it guys thank you very much for watching i know it's a short one and i know i missed a video last week i'm really sorry but i wanted to plan and get this video out a lot of you were asking for it and i thought it'd be really important as you can see gavit you don't need to be scared of it it just takes some time you're going to learn how it works how it feels how to manipulate it but my number one rule for it is to it's to handle it the least amount of times as possible. So, you know, one bend and you're there. Two bends and you're there. Don't keep messing around with it. That's when it starts to look messy. So, don't forget to give this, this video a thumbs up, like and subscribe if you haven't already, all that kind of stuff. And I shall see you all at the next one.